this week's episode of the multiple award-winning, multiple award-winning Here For It podcast is brought to you by Simon. Simon says, stay the fuck out of my house without a warrant. If you have not seen the viral video of Angela Whitehead telling the goddamn white police to get the fuck out of her goddamn house, they have no license and they have no warrant and they did not knock for shit to get the fuck out of her house. You don't know what I'm talking about? And you can Google it right now and go get your life. But Simon says to get the fuck out of my goddamn house. If I had just not came in from smoking a cigarette, the door would have even been open. So shout out to everybody in the hood with a screen door. Everybody in and the this hood. is why your mama told you to close the goddamn screen door. Close, close my door. Don't let the goddamn air conditioning out. Air conditioning in the neighborhood. Next thing you know, white men coming in your house. What is going on? Someone says, close my goddamn door. She, what she said, I'm something and I'm something. I'm, a, I'm aggressive and I'm scared. She's those out. are those are words that came out of Angela's mouth, yeah. which are true and real and need to be said and need to be heard. So one, yes, I am aggressive. Okay, y'all could have probably heard yelling. I'm aggressive. I talk loud. I'm loud. I'm, I'm talking loud woman. right now. So that don't give you license to walk up in this bitch and ask questions because I'm talking loud right now. I'm aggressive. Man, we had reports of an altercation. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like one because I'm loud. <laughs> I didn't fight nobody. Nobody was fighting me. I'm just loud. Aggressive. Like I am right now. That gives no goddamn police officer no right to walk in this door, that door, any other door of a black man or woman, aggressive or not. Regardless of what the fuck they think is going on without a warrant and without fucking knocking. And Angela Whitehead was absolutely fucking right for being aggressive and for being scared and admitting being scared. It's two different things where you you don't know whether you should be scared or not. Uh huh. And when you know you should be scared because it's two tall ass white, pol- white policemen at your door and they could shoot you and get the fuck off because you're in the middle of Montana per capita 0.2% black people. Ain't nobody going to convict these white police officers. So, yes, I am aggressive. Yes, I am scared. And, yes, you're going to get the fuck out. Literally. How about you get the fuck out? (laughs) My name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters. Check out the new blog post. And, of course, RonaldMatters.com. I am the Superman. T-H-E-E-S-U-P-A-M-A-N. A.K.A. The... Sex Stallion. Oh. BKA, the Queen Slayer, first of his name, and breaker of your husband's back. Ooh. And this is here for a podcast. You can also find me on MySpace. Our icebreaker this week is would you would you let your loved the love of your life, excuse me, the uh-huh. love of your life pee on you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I laughed. <laughs> I la- I gotta get the words out. I laughed because I was like, without a doubt, nigga, why is this a question? That's why. And then I thought that, and then I laughed. I was like, I can't say that out loud. I have, to say, no something. <laughs> I have to say something, you know, um, affirming. Hmm. Um, but I don't hear another way to. To say it itself, without a doubt, nigga. What the fuck? Yes. What? Piss on me. <laughs> piss, piss, piss. Drip, drip, drip. <laughs> yes, that nigga can piss on me to this day. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, he can piss on me. Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Y'all don't know. Put your fire out. <laughs> and he was. <laughs> don't keep that fire ablaze. Hot boy Ronald. Okay. Wow. Find him on Twitter. Um. <laughs> I posed that question to open up people's minds of thinking about um, their. It's not the activity; it's who you gonna let do it. Exactly, because um, it's de- definitely who you gonna let top you, and it's not the the activity of bottoming. It's mm-hmm. who you gonna let do it. Yes, but same with um, golden showers, waterfalls, all of those different things. I can remember like certain parts of my sexual career where I was like, <laughs> not a <"Nope."> sexual career. <laughs> I have a resume. It's the sex resume dot mp3. Tune into our Patreon. Absolutely. Um, but I can remember parts of my sexual career where I was like, "Uh, no." And now that I've um, become more senior and tenured, 
Oh, ooh. I would definitely say, uh, yeah. <laughs> where would he like to pee, and when would he like? Oh, to he gets choices on where he gets to pee. Oh, oh yes. I just, I just submit my oh, whole no, body. No, because, oh. oh no, because some people are like, ooh, don't pee in my face because that's disrespectful. Ooh, ooh, don't pee on my booty or don't pee in my booty. <laughs> don't, oh yeah, okay. Ooh, don't not inside. Yeah, please not inside. But it's sterile when it's inside. It is. It's sterile, so mm-hmm. there's no germs there. It's when it's on the outside and it goes inside mm-hmm. and it starts touching surfaces and stuff. Mm-hmm. Then peeing on you gets in you and then you end up with rectal gonorrhea. Possibly. So just let him pee in you. It's swallow a spit, but don't let it sit. You might as well swallow. And do the same thing on the other it's, end. It's safe to just swallow it. Don't take our advice. <laughs> <laughs> but this Me- is measure- research bad. It is. But measure it whether this is going to be the love of your life. Because if he is the love of this season, do not let him pee in you. <laughs> Hold off. Hold on to your because love. Because then when you meet the man that you love, he'll be like, So you let you that nigga did, pee in you? You did this before? <laughs> you know what? I'm reevaluating whether I, I, I like you or not. Yeah, um, when I get my taxes back, I'm going on vacation by myself. <laughs> you can't go. <laughs> I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> Officially. <laughs> So that is our icebreaker this week. What's a good icebreaker? Um, our sub word of the day, oh, W E R D, because Ronald has our official word of the day is a Tinkerbell, which is a queer man who you, who enjoys being urinated upon. Oh. Also known as a urophile, U R A P H I L E, a urophile, which is why we talked about urine. What is our official word of the day? Our official word of the day is lith sexual, who L I T H. Sexual, who is someone who feels attraction towards people but does not desire to have those feelings reciprocated. Um, it's also been said that people who are asexual feel this way a little bit because, of course, I'm asexual but I'm keeping you around and swiping my card. So, girl, I care about you a little taste, but don't be asking when can you eat me out from the back because I, uh, I just pay for Chipotle, it ain't that serious. I and like, I just had Chipotle. <laughs> I would like to meet a man um, or um, trans man who shares that same feeling because I kind of sort of feel that way, which is uh, why, which is why I've been um, looking into this right now. But then I also wondered, as a strict bottom, it is always said that strict bottoms don't want it, things reciprocated like oh yes i will suck your dick for 20 minutes 45 minutes but it's not an activity that i want reciprocated back to me so is that does that make me a lit sexual i think that's i'm trying to evaluate where i fit on the spectrum the important part is it is a spectrum and so you don't have to fit into box a box b or box c Mm -hmm. you can be a little bit of all the above buy me chipotle yeah do buy me chipotle um, and I would like to um, suck on you for a little while. There's going to be someone that that is their dream. They're like, <laughs> I would like a nigga that would like for me to take him to Chipotle, get him the eight ninety five chicken bowl, and we got to put it in the microwave when we get into the house because Chipotle don't have their food warm to my liking. Yeah, there's a, there's okay, someone great. out there that's wishing he don't and even hoping, mind spinning about and wishing. the microwave part. The, the microwave 90, part. First off, he makes one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> He don't care about that. Hot girl Meg. <laughs> Look, hot girl Meg taught me, okay? We'll get there. We are. <laughs> Sooner than you think. Um, But there's a person out there that makes $120,000 a year but just wants the down-home experience, just wants to talk to you while y'all mm-hmm. on the line, mm-hmm. buy you something cheap that you like. It don't matter. It don't hurt his bank. And he don't even have to have sex with you. He wants you to be close to him. Mm. He just wants you to... And he might want you to watch fucking Matlock or... um. Uh, soap operas with him. Uh, is Something there a obscure. YouTube video that could catch me up because I'm gonna need a refresher. Of course, there's always there's always look look for the review of uh, As the World Turns and it will give you reviews as long General as General Hospital. Alive. That shit has been on as long as I've, I'm alive and there Something. are reviews. Uh-huh. So there are men out there for that spectrum. You have to know what part of the spectrum that you are okay with and communicate that part to them and say, okay, is this I think we're okay both lit sexual. He'll be like. What? Let me look that up. Yeah, and maybe you could teach him something, and that turns him on because you taught him something. Shout out to the little sexuals out there. That is our word of the day. W e r d. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. I don't again. listen to this podcast. I'm tired of y'all. First off, you're always solar. bragging about how y'all multiple. Or what? When they get in the intro? Mm. 
since we I got to go hate on y'all on Instagram. Since we got multiple awards. <laughs> we got That's multiple. What, it was the 2000. <clears throat> <clears throat> Moving on. Thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast for the past two years. We appreciate your listenership. We appreciate your likes. We appreciate your shares. We appreciate your subscription. Please continue to share these conversations with your communities because they are not being shared all the time. These are positive conversations that need to be had that us as black gay men need to be having with each other and with the world around us. Um, If you would like to support this podcast, we would greatly appreciate it if you go over to our Patreon right now. The link is the very first link in our bio. Um, I think the email is the first link. So now you want me to rearrange the link? Sure do. <laughs> You're welcome. It says send us questions and comments and da 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 da. da. Send us a dollar before you send us a question or a comment. <laughs> Thank Your you. Money? Huh? It's pride this weekend here in DC. Okay, so. it's girl, listen. Send us some. Uh, we trying to go on a hot girl tour this <laughs> summer, and we can't go on a hot girl tour without your one dollar. <laughs> So we need your one dollar. If you would like to see this podcast continue, if you would like to see the hot girl tour of the summer uh, with these two queers, let us know by giving us one dollar over on our Patreon. There is a Game of Thrones review. Oh, yeah, we did just do that. That will not be done on the podcast. It will only be done on Patreon. So if you would like to hear what our Game of Thrones review, our ghetto Game of Thrones review, first of all, you have to get over to to our Patreon. I talked so much in front of my mouth. I forgot we completely just did a 20 minute Game of Thrones review. Mm. I completely forgot we just did a whole 20 minute Game of Thrones review. It is up for a dollar. If you would like to support this podcast and God, would like to hear the ghetto Game of Thrones review, get over Team to Team Sansa, as previously stated. Shut up, girl. I'm trying oh. to get them to give us a dollar so we can talk about that. <laughs> okay, sure. Thanks. Um, if you do not have a dollar, make sure that you. Like this episode, make sure you should subscribe to this episode and make sure that you share this episode with your communities so that we can continue the conversations. Our affirmation this week is uh, Drag Race inspired. So oh. we only have a couple more episodes of Drag Race. Literally. Uh, it's the reunion episode next and then we got to wait a week and then the finale. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was something that important that happened in this last episode that I wrote an affirmation around. And I thought that uh, we should share it today. So do not build walls that it took you longer to build than it will take you to tear down. Do not build walls that will take you longer to take down than it took you to build since you transversed some of those words. I'm trying to understand. I'm just trying to understand. Okay, so you built some walls. Let's right. say it took you three years to build up My these heart been broke three times, and okay. now I'm just out here. Mm-hmm. So it Jaded. took you three years to build those walls. Mm-hmm. It's going to take you those same three years to tear those walls down uh-huh. for someone else. Oh, my gosh. I'll be single from 32 to 35. Okay. That's why this is an affirmation this week. Do not build walls that it's going to take you longer to tear down than it took you to build. So... Walls meaning um, protections against um, things that may be coming against you, things that may be trying to take advantage of you, Mm -hmm. all of those different things. It's important to have walls to those things, but do not acknowledge them. Yes, but do not say weapons wouldn't form. Yeah, he just said they wouldn't prosper. Amen. Okay, Kojic. Um, (laughs) But do not continue with these walls for years and years and years and continue to build and fortify these walls because eventually you're gonna have to tear them down for somebody. You you built these walls so that the wrong person won't get in, but when the right person shows up, they also can't get in because you done built these goddamn walls. Niggas ain't shit. It's the same thing when you're 41. It's the same thing when you're 62. Wow. Okay. Niggas ain't shit. They not. Not all of them. Because if they'd have got to 62, they definitely know the ways of the the game. And so he was 40. He probably was just on his second marriage and was oh my god just telling my story yes he was a second marriage <laughs> so ronald is gonna be the single auntie out there for for the rest of you guys but i just can't be hollering niggas ain't shit niggas ain't shit they they not gonna never me um <laughs> they not gonna never was that a double negative yes i studied mm. english oh wow we oftentimes build walls around our heart emotions or feelings as a defense mechanism um to the cold and ugly world around us there is a cold and ugly world around us but do not spend time fortifying those walls where they cannot be taken down for someone else that is worthy of coming into those walls. Come on. 
that is what a, inspired that? That is a, a pun intended. So they they talked about on drag race. Um, Silky and Evie talking about they built up these walls towards each other because mm-hmm. they basically started off throwing shade, but now they've got to take these walls down to even be friends mm-hmm. because now they're going on tour and shit like that. And girl, Child. I really didn't even mean that shit. Girl, you made it to the top care. four, girl. So we both got to go and get on the Murray and Peters who are LOL. Exactly. Everybody knows the Murray so, and Peters who is not the tour you want to go on. But, um, <laughs> a whole nother subject. But the point is, they they spent so much time building up these walls of hatred towards each other that they now have to take these walls down stone by stone, brick by brick, to even be friends or be mm. friendly or cordial. Chakaris. They don't have to. Wow. They don't have to get it. Well, they they don't have ice dragons. <laughs> so, if, for those of you out there without ice without dragons, dragons, you're, gonna have you to are going to have to hand manual labor hand, fish hand take these bricks down that you built up. To let someone in as a friend, as a lover, as a connection, as a business partner, as all of those different things. So do not fortify these walls because you've had uh, bad experiences before. Because once you fortify them, you still got to take them walls down eventually. <sighs> there is some bad grout in there. You don't have to redo it. <laughs> <laughs> you are a craftsman. <laughs> and I mean that in more, more than one way. No man is an island unto himself. Huh? So, no, you cannot build a wall around yourself and just live there completely by yourself in isolation. That is not a real thing. You still got to go to work. <laughs> that would be killing me. I'm like, I could do it if I just didn't have to go to work. No, you couldn't. Okay. You couldn't. Well, that's my current barrier. That's my, I confess that's my current barrier. I'm just talking well, about Well, you me. re-listen to this affirmation in you, day. you be my therapist. <laughs> when you taking appointments? <laughs> Girl. Um... <laughs> That is our affirmation this week. Get I from that what you <laughs> get from that what you would like. Uh, so this week, um, I'm gonna flip the script a little bit because all the topics that are tepid topics are Drakaris topics at this point. Hashtag fire. And I don't mean fire in a good way. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, fire, oh. I'm about to Daenerys burn this bitch to the motherfucking ground. A full episode. I am, going, full I am episode. about to. But before I do that to King's Landing, All right. I'm going to move a segment up. And the segment that I'm moving up is Songs for Our Souls. Thank you. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Are you so ready? before we delve into depression okay. and burning down King's Landing. I'm here. I think that it, it. we are already on one accord here. Yeah. I would like our listeners to be on one accord as well. I think that y'all know where we're about to go. Buckle up because this well, is don't. this okay. I mean, we in the dirty Ride dangerous. Be a hot girl. <laughs> Ride dangerous. <laughs> okay, great. What are we doing? Tina Snow shook the motherfucking table this weekend. Um, and you. I was Come the on. Long Island iced tea that was sitting on the table thinking I was about to be sipped and then I got hot girl me. I got thrown off the goddamn table. Hey Amen. Hot girl meg. Bouncing up and off and down the table, and you already know what it is. What is the song for your soul? The song for my soul is Shake That. Okay. It's just the way that it fell perfectly in the lineup. So also, shout out to whoever came up with the lineup, because you know, they could have also was like, well, we're going to start with the slow song at the beginning, because we want to be a singer. No! She said, I was on with some gangster shit. Then I want track two to be hood rat shit. And we need the um, audio clip from the little boy on the news. I loved it. <laughs> and then she was just, she just set it up. She set it up and she set it up. And right after the amazing track that is Simon Says, uh-huh. she followed it up with Shake That. And I was just like, I know that everybody is going to want Shake That to be the next single. But then Simon also says no because time. when Simon Says went off, she slapped y'all clean across the face with motherfucking Shake That. So I know y'all gonna love Shake That, but I mean Simon Says, but Shake That is their girl. Shake Shake That is their girl. Okay. Shake that ass, bitch. Shake that ass. Shake that. Shake that. Shake that, shake that ass, bitch. What uh, what is she about to say? Who knows? I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy right now. So I just hope that she encourages say something that encourages dollar throwing. Um, Put your hands on your knees, girl. Uh, pissing under the little taste of feet of me, you love. Oh wow! <laughs> um, just <laughs> literally shake, shake that, that and let him do whatever you know. <laughs> let him shake it out on activities. you. Activities. 
But yeah, I mean, like, Money Good is my song. I some, Money Good is my song. Something came on, and I didn't even know. Pimping. Uh-huh. When the girl said on Twitter, it was like a hip-hop reviewer somewhere, said that Megan Thee Stallion is the female member of UGK. I threw my phone. I had to, I had to press a retweet right quick and throw my phone because I was like, you know what? I really want to go listen to the last like? um, UGK couple albums. She reminded me of Too Short. Like she when really Too Short was hot down south. She Oakland. reminded me of Too Short. Like Too Southern Short rap. went there, said all kind of nasty ass, just gutter butt ass shit, mm-hmm. and had a good flow and had a good production behind him, uh-huh. and that's what she gave me. And I have not heard a male. Nor female rapper give me too short since too short. I'll write that down. <laughs> so what's what are your tracks <clears throat> that you love? Because I know it's song for yourself, but like, girl, it's a it's a day of movement, ma'am. It is a movement. <laughs> so here's the deal. I originally had a song for my soul um, because Roman Holiday had made it back onto our yeah, timelines. She was on, she was on there. Um, and I, I think that was a great Nicki Minaj moment that popularized her to white girl audiences, and it was a great song. And I'm glad that it came back on our timelines. So that was originally my song for my soul. And then this shit came out, and I was like, "Well, sorry, Nick, I'm gonna have to give it to you another week." <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Nick. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this song right here uh, Still knocks for me It's gonna knock for me all summer I know I talked about maybe two episodes Pole Dancer was gonna be my spring oh, yeah. slash summer uh, This is This is starting off Track two or just reverse the tracks on the playlist mm, No I start here and then go Everywhere else <laughs> um, But this song right here is The beginning of my stallion summer Because I am about to be riding To this song Bitch, I'm a star. Got these niggas wishing. He said he hungry. This booty, the kitchen. Hello. Yeah, that's my dog. He gonna sit and listen. Call him a trick, and he don't get off up. Don't get off. Hold up. Mm-hmm. Bitch, I'm a star. Got these niggas wishing. He says this booty is the kitchen. You like that booty part, don't you? I do. I changed because she said pussy, and I said booty. <laughs> Call him a trick, and he don't get offended. He know he give his money to Martell. He know it's very expensive to date me. Mm. Told him to go put my name on that account because when I need money, yeah. I ain't trying to hold up. Ah! He know he giving his money to Martell. He know it's very expensive to date me. Told him to go put my name on that account because when I need money, I ain't trying to wait. She said it twice. She did. <laughs> Reinforced it. Um, Cash It is the song for my soul this week because mm-hmm. I felt the most from that song mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. spoke to me. Um... Thinking my life with each word. Every word. Every <laughs> word of the song. He know, he know that when I need some money, I need to go get to that account. So if it's not in my account, it need to be in your account. And One I of these cards going to have to user. <laughs> One of these cards. Go- and my name got to be on the account. Yeah. He says when he's hungry, my booty is the kitchen. That's philosophy. That's, That's poetry. That's the Instagram caption. He's hungry. He know where to come and eat. eat. He know where to come and eat. That's the way that man's heart. That's what my grandmama said. And mine too. Shout out to Rosalie. And they both can't be wrong. (laughs) Shout out to Rosalie from Mississippi. Shout out to Helen. Y'all can't be wrong. (laughs) Y'all got to where y'all got to. (laughs) So y'all can't be wrong. Talk about Um, 8, 9, 12 children. How you get there, man? I let them eat from this kitchen. (laughs) That's how I got here. Woo. So those are the songs for our souls. Forgive us. We could not wait. Yeah. We had to get that shit the fuck out the way because Fever. the rest. Fever. Stallion Summer is here to stay. Um, and so like I pref- prefaced. Oops, Ooh, big that was words. A word. Big words. Um, before uh, I switched the script with uh, putting songs for our souls that these next topic. What should the next single be? What are you guys excited for? I think a lot of people are just really going to be excited. Everybody's just ready for Simon Says. I'm just like, girl, there's so many more opportunities. No, why not start off big? Again, uh, put well, the yeah, same. She got to follow Big Old Freak. Yeah. And she got to take us through June, July, August. So, uh... Well, can she do a? Can she do like Simon says, and then at the end, you know, like the last one minute of, you know, like they introduce another song, just in case you don't like that one, then you know. No, they gonna like that. That's one. for girls with low budgets. They, maybe. they don't know. Don't know. This is it's a guarantee hit as soon as they put it on the radio. I don't know if it's a radio edit yet, but um, it's gonna need a radio edit. <laughs> it's gonna need a radio edit. 
but we need to put the same energy and soul um, behind uh, Simon says. I almost said love Simon. Um, behind Simon says that we put behind Bodak Yellow because y'all was like, "Ooh, make it go number one." Ooh, make it go number one. This is an original song. Uh oh. <laughs> with an original beat. With original raps. No ghostwriter. Written by the original rapper. Well, Juicy J wrote the, the chorus. Juicy J did write the chorus, but she did everything else. The, the, the raps. Yeah, the raps. The, <laughs> the raps. raps. Left, so, right, left, right. Simon says left, right. Okay. So if Great we, work, Juicy J. You did great there. I, I think he. I think he did. It, he, it was cool. It was, but it, I don't need Juicy J on this. I actually was surprised that Juicy J is who she went with for her mainstream release after her big break. Um, I know that she said like Juicy J was a major inspiration for her, but um, I think that in traditional rap for females you're supposed to have a squad behind you and come up with around the sound that those people had going on and you're supposed to uh, like you know well she has a Houston sound like her her, her it's, cadence her saying, cadence of her I think rap she, is I think she's Houston. going with bitch it's a southern rap sound whether it's Memphis whether it's Oakland with too short or whether it's Houston um, with a little Texas UGK in it um, it's a southern rap sound, and y'all girls gonna get all of the southern. Y'all girls not just gonna pencil me in. Okay. And I could see um, her skirting over to Atlanta for her next release because she's good. That's where gonna, she should go. She's yes. definitely gonna skirt on over there because you know the girls always end up in Atlanta. <laughs> so she's gonna skirt over there for a little bit in her next project. I'm not offended by that. I appreciate. Um, I appreciate a good Jesse Fay beat if she's gonna if he's gonna give her some good ass shaking beats. It's got to be some good ass shaking beats. I, I just want her to I just want her to not say nothing problematic. Beats. She is the anti city girl for me. I don't me. think she she has I don't not. Think she is that girl. I don't think she. I don't feel like that. But as soon as I say that I don't feel like that, then her goddamn homophobic voicemail will come out. My son can't. Ma'am, first of all, girl, why she don't have no kids. Why are you getting pregnant right no now? Kids. I'm like, ma'am, why are you worried about getting pregnant? This is like the big break of your career. I'm just like, and who is the man? Because you, you said once you let that nigga go, you got more money. So you're gonna give up the money? <laughs> That's what. <I'm> like. <sighs> songs for our souls and he songs for our summer. Today, songs for our summer. Songs for uh, songs for our summer. I'm sorry. Um, again, like I said, the next topics, Drakkar's topics, because yeah. I'm just gonna have to light these girls up. Okay. At this point, they have been asking for it for a while, and I am here and have the attention span to give it. I don't. Okay. We make the trick. <laughs> First of all, shout out to this traditional girl who recommended their tequila. I have not been able to find it in silver at the liquor store by my house, but they have it in um, Resposado. Is that a Resposado. word? Resposado. Can we drink that or we don't drink that? No, that's fine. Okay, great. I'll get that next week. I don't know. Um, last week we dragged the city girl and the audacity of they DC Black Pride. Pride. Uh, what, what are y'all doing? We dragged them. If you would like to hear us dragging them, tune into last week's episode. Is she, did she not coming? No, she's still coming. Oh my God. Um, this week, the mayor of DC, mayor of DC. Muriel Bowser, Miss Muriel Bowser. The girls drag her every week. Her pink curl tree ain't done close enough. Her hair ain't bumped. You know, when you keep a short stay, you gotta keep it bumped. Very SWV, very Taraji P. Henson, 1987. And she don't keep it bumped good enough for the girls. And they're like, you need to take out one hour to go to the salon, ma'am. Well, yes, she has some stylistic and. Um Policy. She has some choices. Mainly some policy. I mean, like, girl, we can get over the hair, girl, if you was out here uh, doing good policies. But your hair bad and you ain't got no good policies? What so, you stressed out about? <laughs> so I read I read somebody this past weekend. Um, your hair looking bad and you ain't got no good policies. What you doing? Remind, remind me to tell you off, off uh, camera. Off air. <laughs> off air about um, a girl I read this weekend about having bad makeup and being evil at the same time. It's like, girl, you ugly. You're supposed to be nice. Anyway, um... There was a study that came and out. You lucky I went there because you know I would have banged you up, and then we both would have been looking. I I recommended been the girl from Detroit and the girl from Memphis, but I recommended that we go back and read her one at a time, and we were in a group of seven. 
Everybody was at her the, at the moment. And, and it was like, I've got two reads I can say when I walk up, and then I'm going to tag you in. And you, anyway, off subject. Oh, there's a study that says, <laughs> that's what I said <laughs> after, after the Pride, pride, pride. Um, there's a study that says DC cops arrest blacks at a higher rate than white people in DC. Crown this breaking. is not news. This has been a trending topic for years. But a study has come out um, that the ACL, ACLU has conducted between 2013 and 2017 that says that blacks accounted of uh, 47% of the population in D.C., but 86% of the arrestees. Um, blacks were arrested at 10 times the rate of white people in the district. So uh, Fox 5 D.C. broke this news um, and this story by the ACLU, ACLU and also approached Mayor Muriel Bowser for comment. Of course they did. And Miss um, Muriel <laughs> said this. Anybody in any neighborhood in D.C. say they don't want police protection to make sure we have safety. I think that MPD is working very hard to keep our neighborhoods safe and they're being responsive to the calls for service. Uh, so we don't want anybody arrested for petty crime, um, but we also don't want to have petty crime. Uh, so we have to do more. Okay. So we have to do more. We have to do more by starting to replace your ass. If you are someone that is supposedly from the community, by the community, and and for the community, uh, I'll say you why gotta, are you as a far. black woman standing against a study that says that there are way more instances of black people in your city mm. being arrested than white people for pettier crimes? And you're like, well, we just have to... We have to do better, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have to police more. The problem is the policing. You are already policing more. You're policing in the wrong places for the wrong goddamn things. And so if I can be arrested in the city of D.C. for being angry with a police officer or having not the quote, the quote unquote un enough amount of marijuana in my pocket because uh, there's an industry over here that has buckets of marijuana, tons, truckloads of marijuana, truckloads. and they're being paid and subsidized to have that. But if I have two joints in my pocket, I gotta, I gotta discuss with you why I have these two joints in my pocket with um, a fucking sandwich bag because I might be, I might, it might be intent. Oh, intent to dis distribute, to sell, distribute, distribute, or whatever they intent call it. Intent to distribute. Yeah. AKA, you might be a drug dealer on the streets. Girl, what's I am here selling with two joints, man. <laughs> Girl, who I'm getting? <laughs> I can barely get myself out with two joints. <laughs> First off, that makes me a small business. <laughs> that makes me a small I business. I thought DC was supposed to be a place for small business owners. <laughs> that makes me a small business, <laughs> sir and or ma'am. <laughs> Simon says, get the fuck out of my face with that shit. And Mario Bowser can get the fuck out of our office with the same bullshit. Do not pretend to be from a community and don't be for the community that you are from. That, that does not make you an ally. That makes you an enemy. Um, Muriel Bowser is also not alone in the company of black female mayors that are possibly enemies of the people that they say that they are allies for. I'm just really looking at how D.C. is 61 square miles. <laughs> And they arrested 80%. 86. 86 percent of 86 percent of the arrestees in the district are black people. Wow. That means 14 percent are white and or other. Do you know how many others there are in the district? The whole city is 68 square miles. 60. 68 square It takes miles. a weak ass bitch. Huh? One of my favorite songs from. Um, Come on, W A B. No, it's W A B. She didn't want to put cuss words on her. I appreciate that, list. and that's nice. I'm putting cuss Walmart words. will have to um, censor, sure. Yeah. But it takes a weak ass bitch, in the words <laughs> of Megan Stallion, um, to not stand up for the community that you claim to be from. And she has claimed to be from D.C., even though she's not technically from D.C. proper. City. Even though she's not technically from D.C. proper. LOL. Uh, even though the LGBT office that mm, mm. I'm gonna leave that. Um, also, it. looking at mm. <laughs> Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who has officially been um, elected and and put into office as the first uh, black lesbian mayor of Chicago. Chicago. I was gonna say Chicago. Yes. Um, so the LGBT community of Chicago has been very vocal about she really ain't one of us. 
I, they have been very vocal about it during the election li- process. Yes, during the election process, they and were. since then, it, uh, and she's also been to the White House and sat and talked with Donald she Trump. She has been to the White House. So you still I would it like, up. I would like to see her not go down this path that the Chicago LGBT people have been telling us that she's going down. So be careful. They be told wary, us the bitch. stove was hot. They told us her stove was hot, and she she's like, oh yeah, the stove's hot over here. So, Lori Lightfoot, Simon Says, remember where you came from, girl. <sighs> so, next. Oh, I told you it was all Jakars from here uh, on out. I told you. I said girls. that. This past week, we also saw the um, states of Alabama and Missouri enact uh, Draconi. Next subject. Draconian anti-women Missouri laws. Missouri has been trash. Yes. Every time that we've gone to Chicago together, we've had to drive through Missouri, and they was like, "Don't abort your baby, don't abort your baby. You can do better. You can be better than." And how about was like, Superman? What the fuck is all these billboards? And why do they spend all this money on billboards instead of on contraception and sex education? Studies have shown that when you spend more money on sex education and contraceptives, you do not have to worry about girls getting. A- I'm jumping way ahead because you know my opinion be strong. I'm aggressive and I'm loud. Angela Whitehead, call me, girl. We sis, we sisters. Uh, but um, uh, what is going on? I hate driving to Missouri. I know that um, in the South we always drive to that restaurant where they throw the biscuits at you and it's really mm-hmm. cute and classy. I'm like these little teenage boys be playing baseball and in the summer they come work at this restaurant where they throw biscuits. What's the name of the restaurant? Do you remember? Uh, no. I was gonna say I don't. But I do that. like. Places in St. Louis. Yeah, because that pork chop plate was like fifteen dollars, and I was like, when I get to St. Louis, girl, y'all charging me. Um, what's the girl in St. Louis that got the restaurant? Sweetie pies. Y'all charging me sweetie pies prices, and ain't nobody here famous. What are y'all doing? Yeah, I hate driving through Missouri because those billboards get on my fucking nerves. So it's not even just billboards; these are laws now. They're so they've like, they're turned laws. They've turned the billboards into laws in states they got like so Alabama, much fucking money, and Missouri, um, where they have enacted dr- draconian anti-women laws instead of shitting on the states that we tell y'all all about with these fucked up ass laws. We all know that they're fu- fucked up. We all know that they shouldn't be happening. But I would like to uplift the people that are still in those states because I know Alabama rates. 50 out of 51 in education. I just wanted to say that. Yes, we know that as well. Um, There are people that are still in those states that are attempting and trying to do work and attempting or trying to leave. And so um, I know that this is a prime opportunity for us to shit on Alabama and Missouri because I would like to. It's some good dick in um, Missouri, too. Only you would know that. (laughs) Um, But what else they do when they ain't educated? Wow. Wow. <laughs> We're not shitting on those states. Thank you. I'm going to strike that from record. Edit that out, Petey. Um, be strong to the people that are still in Alabama and Missouri throughout this, including and especially women that have to go through this and have to go through uncertainty of whether you know what's going to happen in your uterus or not, or whether you have to go to a whole nother state for these basic services that should be provided to every human on the planet um we live here in dc uh where we have a bit of privilege but we do not have the full range to change things the way that the residents in those states do that so they people, need it and they need a we that's why we're talking about it but people in those states in alabama and in missouri they have the power to change it all we can do here in D.C. is magnify their voices because we don't have those those draconian laws here in D.C. It's not more than likely ever going to happen because this is more of a progressive area. We can only magnify people that live in the areas of, of Alabama and Missouri because they still stay there. They still have family there. They still have X amount of reasons of still being there or wanting to escape at some point. But that doesn't mean that their human rights should be taken away while they live in those states still. Um, I think that we should still organize. We should still mobilize and get our numbers to be greater than these evangelical conservatives in these states because those numbers 
are so high they go out to vote every fucking time there's a, a an election and the people that these laws are affecting unfortunately do not and so what we can do is organize and mobilize so that the people that these laws affect do get out to vote and do have their, their voices heard um about these issues that affect them so much um even in 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 alabama public tv alabama public tv they are banning Arthur, Arthur the Ab- the gay Abbar. marriage episode. Yes, the gay marriage episode, which is the season opener to the Arthur show, because it depicts a gay wedding. But they never, in the history of anywhere in Alabama TV, have had that same energy for a heterosexual wedding. Public broadcasting. Yeah, PBS service. I pay my taxes. I deserve to be represented. And these white men is just like, so, bitch, basically, Roughly. bitch. And, and throw a rock at you. <laughs> Girl, it's the public broadcaster. Ma'am, you don't get to decide what's digestible for me, ma'am. Y'all give me everything else with this corn syrup and um, yellow number three in it. Give me this Arthur episode. Just like Tyrion said, you do not get to choose. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? Spoiler alert for Game of Thrones. <laughs> if if that spoiled anything, that, yeah. oh my, God. and that did not because you know anything. we get in trouble because we. But you do not get to choose, and um, people that these laws are affecting in Alabama and Missouri that would hear this podcast that are remotely adjacent to the our, our, got our, coin. our they fan base. billboards writing laws they are doing everything it is our job to mobilize and organize your numbers right now because Call this me. affects if you want to you. see the new author episode i got the link this affects you um well i don't yet but i'll get the link when the show come out this affects you and the only way that it can change is if we all band together in those states it is going to take the people that are in those states to band together for this to not be law for these things to change. I'm just uh, Simon says keep that same energy for hero marriages or shut the fuck up. I'm just excited to be out here bootlegging the new Arthur episode. Girl, you need to link sit to hit me up. I got the new Arthur episode. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Me. I'm oh. Go. Silence is violence. Silence is violence. We will not be silent in um, the trans- transgressions against trans people, especially trans women. Trans women in this country have a life expectancy of 45 years old. Oh, that's an uptick. Hold, it was used to. Give me five seconds. Oh, well, 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 well. Trans women on a whole in this country have a life expectancy of 45 years old. Black trans women in this country have a life expectancy of 31 years old. There we go. I'm like, girl, get your numbers right. Okay. I have them. <laughs> Research based podcast. I love The this. life expectancy of a white man in this country is 82 years old. Can you figure out what that disparity is? True. There is a 50 year disparity between that of a black trans woman and a white cis het man. A 50 year disparity The reason I bring that up is um, A month ago we reported on Malaysia Booker um, Being attacked by a group Of uh, Presumed heterosexual people In her apartment complex parking lot Um, There was An issue after a minor car accident She Disagreed in paying Someone cash for the car accident because she could not provide proof of car insurance. There are conflicting reports that uh, the people that jumped her made a bet about uh, jumping her and, you know, said, hey, girl, if I give you $200, will you go beat up that trans girl for me because she did A, B, and C. We really don't know the story. That was, he had followed her to make sure she didn't flee. And then he was, they were yelling and then while they were yelling and the crowd was building around, somebody was like, hey, bro, I give you $20 if you whoop her ass. And then over about a fender bender, ma'am, I'm a, not even about being a trans woman or a woman or a human being, 
Just, it was a fender bender. If you would like to write down my insurance information, I don't have insurance information. We're in the same apartment complex. You know where I live. Just sue me for it through Allstate, through State Farm. Oh, you probably don't have insurance either because we in the hood. Um, So to chase me down, one, it's like, what is going on with this, this high-speed chase? And then to run me off the road and to force me out of my vehicle and to argue with me to build a crowd and then for someone in, in that crowd to say, I'll give you $200 if you whoop her ass. What? What? What is going on? Megan the Stallion is giving us hope because <laughs> we need it down in Texas. Yes, what Houston, Houston and versus yeah, Houston and Dallas different. What as well. is going on? Um, but I fear the same thing. Two hundred dollars. There First was also all, that was the weakest damn. What? What? That was the weakest damn bet. And for that nigga to take it, was your fender? Was two hundred dollars gonna fix your fender bender? No. So what the fuck you doing taking a two hundred dollar bet to whoop her if you didn't? Oh, I'm not here for it. I'm not. Yeah, I'm absolutely not here for it. Um, but I, I think that there, no there is uh, well, one that was a month ago. So let's let's begin there. If you have not uh, been listening to this podcast, you are not aware of the subject. We reported on it a month ago when very few people even talked about the issue. Unfortunately, update: Malaysia has been shot and killed. So even after fleeing her own apartment um, that she paid rent at, that she was legally able to be in and should be free from harm it's by horrible. just coming, it's horrible. It's just horrible coming out. home. She should just be able to, to just come home because I paid my money to just come home here. It's horrible. She had to flee that place and find another place to live. And found another place to live. Thank you so much. Shout out to Abounding Prosperity for supporting her and the we community you, around Kirk. them. That they they are the reason that she was able to flee her her previous apartment, but she was still able to flee that that previous apartment. And now a month later, is dead. Not thirty one years old. The life expectancy of a black trans woman. She didn't even make it to thirty one. That that's crazy. And women live longer than men. Trans women don't even get half the life expectancy of a man. The accountability here, I lay at the feet of black heterosexuals in Dallas, Texas. I lay this at your feet. It is your problem to deal with. There is nothing that Malaysia could have, should have done differently. She did everything right. She was living. She made an accident. She tried to make amends for that accident. She was made fun of and beat up because of that accident. She got herself out of the situation to not be in the bullshit no more and still was shot and killed. What else could we for what for what, what else could we what else could we what else could she have shot done? Shot and killed for what? I don't know. I still don't know shot and killed for what. I just it doesn't make sense. So I think that the the conversation that we need to have with black America, heterosexual black America, is when you all have these issues with white America um, about talking about basic rights, Run equality. Run matters what you doing. Run a matters what you do. Nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, am I? I don't know. No. When y'all are having these conversations about basic rights, equality, and survival. Um, against white America, mm. why can't you turn around in that same conversation and have that same conversation with the LGBT people that look just like you? Cause y'all stay calling my number. What you doing, running man? Running matters. What you doing? Going to the bar. Y'all drive me to drink. I don't know. Malaysia Booker is no different than Trayvon Martin. Let that sink in. Malaysia Booker is no different than Laquan McDonald. Oh, Malaysia Booker is no different than you tack on any other name of a black mm-hmm. cishet person that was shot and killed in America by a terrorist. 
and we made a hashtag. We did a vigil. We did rallies. We marched. We did all of those things when it was a black cishet person. And so when it's a black trans person, there are silence. The silence is striking from the heterosexual community. No one is talking about this but gay people. Mm -hmm. Gay people are the only ones talking about this issue. And so I lay this at the feet of any heterosexual listening to this podcast, especially a black heterosexual, is what work are you doing? What is your allyship? And what is your willingness to be an accomplice in that allyship? I need accomplices. I don't want you to stand on the side. I don't want you to make a fucking tweet. I want you to get in the goddamn fight with me and be an accomplice. Say, well, so he tur- he he burned that building down. I don't know where he was, police officer. He was um probably at work. I need you to be an accomplice. You need to be an accomplice, not an ally. Malaysia Booker deserved an accomplice, not an ally. We had uh, allies in place for Malaysia, and we see where that got her. She's dead a month later. We talked about this a month ago, and a month later, she's dead. No help from anybody that showed up to stomp her on on video. Why on Facebook. were they stomping her on video? I was just for the same thing. Ah, I was gonna let you finish. Why were they stomping her? And they still don't know who that person was, and that person has not been arrested yet. From the reports I've seen, if there's another big there was no there, there was one there was one gentleman that was arrested um, when yeah. she was originally beaten because um, he had said that, that he was um, offered two hundred dollars. Yes, so that wasn't gonna fix, fix your fender bender. And then other people who participated and got a lick in, who are those people? Where are they? They also deserve to be arrested um, for their crimes. This is also not South specific. Um, there is also another trans woman that has also been killed. Basically, she is the third black trans woman fatally shot in the United States in the last week. I didn't say this year. In the last week. It has been seven whole days. No Tony Braxton. Three trans women in this week. Mm. Michelle Simone, a 40-year-old trans woman. Come on. This means this is a woman that beat the odds of being... 31. 31. Her life expectancy. She was supposed to die nine years ago based on life expectancy. Mm-hmm. She was fatally shot in Philadelphia um, on Sunday. So after local authorities received a notification in the early hours of the morning, they transported Simone from the city's Franklinville neighborhood, neighborhood to Temple University Hospitals where doctors pronounced her dead upon arrival. Michelle Simone. 40-year-old transgender woman that beat the odds that said that you were going to die by you thir- by the time that you were 31 still shot at 40. This is difficult. This is diff- it's difficult to come do this podcast. Wow. Well, it's not a, it's not about just this podcast. It's about the things that are outside of this podcast. Um it is a difficult world that we live in. The world where I have to report on this because it's not going to be reported on anywhere else. We speak your name. Michelle Simone, Malaysia Booker, you have a place in our heart and you have a place in history. And Forever. hopefully it is not forgotten and the, these lessons around your deaths are learned from. Hopefully. Mm. Um, silence is violence. That's that's where I, I began this with. If you are not talking about this situation, if you don't know about this situation, and you are not willing to talk about the situation, you are a part of the problem. Your silence is violence. Um, again, shout out to Abounded Prosperity. Um, I, I know that they are still doing a lot of work. Thank they you even for they even you returned. Some of the donations that uh, people made to Malaysia since she's died because they didn't want to be um, looking like they're yeah, mm, doing benefiting, no mm. benefiting from her death. Yeah. That you know they were only here to support her, and now that he she's was gone, just in pictures with her, I was like, oh my gosh, I love. She was also just at a trans rally where she, she spoke was... some eloquent words, and that's where I'm going to end this with. Okay, because I don't want this to go on for 35 more minutes, but it could. She it could. <laughs> It, this really could be a Malaysia podcast, well, come on. but it's but um, so before she got shot, um, 
this past week, Malaysia was also at a affirming trans rally. She was just out here speaking publicly at, within a month of being gay bashed and beat on video on the whole internet. Mm-hmm. She was back out, makeup, makeup deep. done, hair, <laughs> hair done, played. and Fit was speaking played. speaking at a trans rally. And she said some really eloquent words, but she was obviously choked up because still fresh from all the Events. trauma that had befallen her recently. And I'm probably sure the trauma that befell her before she got stumped and beat up in a parking lot. Because there is so much trauma that comes with being a trans woman. A lifetime. So uh, I'm, I'm sure it was more than than the, the recent altercation that she was in. Um, but the most important words that spoke out to me were... Our time to seek justice mm-hmm. is now. If not, when? So she's dead now. Mm-hmm. She just said those words. And she was like, it was me this time. It was me this time. And when after Who she is had gonna- got beat. Yes. Up, she was like, it was me this time. And it was just so, it it was, it, the word, uh, 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 words. I was just, oh my God. So she could she didn't have words either. She she was choked up. Um supporters uh walked her off of the stage, but she had already said enough. She didn't she didn't need a whole speech to yeah. say this. The words of if not when if not if, if we don't seek justice now, then when those are those you don't need a whole speech. Amen. Those are those those words are strong enough and they stand on their own. So I'm gonna end that with that. Um May is Trans Visibility Month, um, and unfortunately, these are the topics that we have to cover, but make sure that you are supporting a trans person, a trans man, or a trans woman in your life. Be friends. Talk to them. Start conversations. Learn their experiences. Learn their journeys. Do not just be someone that is on the outside of the LGBT spectrum. We are all a family, and um, they need our support. Obviously, um, and do not be complicit because of your own fears. I'm gonna end that there. Um, Castor Samanye uh, is the athlete that we talked about a couple weeks ago that was um, being adversely impacted because of the testosterone in her system and. Uh, the IAAF was um, imposing restrictions on her competing and making her uh, take hormone therapy to replace the hormones that she naturally has occurring in her body because white women were jealous of her whooping their ass. I am proud to report an update that South South Africa, her government, is uh, backing her in this fight to continue to compete regardless of the amount of natural uh, and naturally occurring testosterone in her bloodstream and that she is just as natural and just as real and just as relevant as any other athlete competing in any of these uh, track and field games. And so I, that's a good news story because, again, before it was just cast her out here by herself. Uh, she does have a family. Uh, she is a wonderful lesbian, a, a wonderful mother and a wonderful racer. And thankfully, her government has her back and will be joining her in this fight that is absolutely right and correct. She has just as much claim to be an athlete as Michael Phelps, as Michael Jordan, as LeBron James, as anyone that has maybe a little bit of a a physical advantage against their competitors. Can I have some? Can I just have a little bit of the advantage? I need a little taste of it. Yes. Um, so I'm excited for Castle Samaya's story. Uh, I'm going to continue to track it. Uh, hopefully you guys are aware of this story. Uh, if not, tune in to two episodes ago. We talked about this story. Um, the next mostly good news story <laughs> is um, Duty Chand. I think that I'm fucking that up. So I'm going What'd to you s- say? Duty Chand. Okay. I think I'm fucking that up. Okay. So I'm going to spell it for you guys to look up. Let me Google. Duty D U T E E Chand C H A N D Chand. Mm-hmm. She oh, is Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this. I didn't remember her name, but it's in my history. Okay. Yes. 
Um, so she is India's first um, open sports person um, that has come out about uh, being in the same sex relationship. I love when I Google the name, like all these great, cute, these cute, like, look, now I ain't no slow ass bitch. The pics that come up on Google images are real cute. <laughs> yes. So, also an athlete. She in ain't the, no slow ass bitch. In the track and field range, <laughs> as well as Castor Samanye, but yeah. she is a, um, she's open about being in the same sex relationship where in India, um, they have. The, the Supreme Court in India has struck down protections against um, people that are gay. Mm-hmm. Um, she said that she gathered up the courage to speak out after the Indian Supreme Court struck down a law which made gay sex a criminal offense last year. So even though technically in her country it is a offense, a legal offense to be a gay person in India right now, she still came out. And still taught her truth and still is upstanding in her same sex relationship. And I am absolutely here for it. The breaker of chains. Okay. <laughs> the breaker of races. The breaker of clocks. Sexism. She is, okay. Racism. What are y'all doing? Break uh, it up. Stop. Um, and so I'm absolutely here for it. I want her to continue to win. I want her to, to continue to succeed in these races and continue to uh, break boundaries and sound barriers with her speed. At the speed of light, things can change. And someone that... 23 years old. Oh. Yeah, and someone that is that groundbreaking that knows that when I go back home, I know this is technically a legal offense, but I don't give a fuck. This is who I am. You don't give a damn. Well, give a fuck. It, that's like a southern song. Okay. It, is a, a, it is a song. Okay. Um, RuPaul's best friend race happened. Oh, my God. Again. Can we not talk about it this week? No. Oh. You're passionate. It's only two more episodes left, and we ain't okay, gonna be able well, to talk about that shit until one. January. We can skip this one. Oh my god! This is the one of the important episodes. This oh is the the top god. competing girls episode. The episode where Evie reveals herself to be a true competitor against Brooklyn. Cool. This is what you wanted. Okay, get it out. Oh, you sound. You sound. <laughs> your tone sounds pointed. <laughs> oh, so now Brooklyn is supposed to be a valid. I mean, not Brooklyn. Evie's supposed to be a valid competitor to us in my fave. Okay, come on. Come on. Well, is Brooklyn a valid competitor? Because I think she just showed up in is things. Is your right she... hand a valid competitor against Brooklyn? It might, it might as well be, y'all, as y'all far as this top four is concerned. Y'all room together and let Brooklyn take this crown. Because you and your right hand can't get it. So, my co-host is caping for a white girl with blonde hair winning this race. and I am What is not. wrong with that? There are 17 other ones of them. All right, here we go. Another white girl winning a crown with blonde hair. She shouldn't win it. Is it an affirmative action hire? What are we doing? Apparently, it's not no goddamn affirmative action because it's all white girls with blonde hair winning this goddamn competition. So, where is the affirmative action? Here we go. Come on, get it out. Where is the affirmative get it, action? Get it, get it, get it. Affirmative action would have said it would have been at least not a white girl with blonde hair this time. Come on, here we go. <laughs> just, we have our final. Y'all just gonna co host this podcast. Cause I'm about to give out. <laughs> That's cause you a weak ass bitch. <laughs> Come on, me again, me again. Cause you a weak ass bitch. I stand with my whole. Well, heart. we are at our final four now for uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. Still key to win. Okay. <laughs> um, Since I can't have Brooklyn, I guess who else I'm gonna pick? Okay. I gotta pick a brown person because wow, I gotta pick a brown person because I'm brown. Oh, the girl. You sound like a log, a log, a log uh, cabin Republican. Girl, what do you mean I have to pick somebody that likes gay people and I'm gay? What do you mean I can pick someone that's conservative? Oh, but also the black girl said, "I am black, not brown. Do not demand brown on me. It black is black. So I have to pick a black person, not a brown person, because if." This is no racism shade, but like if Mercedes That sounds very racist. Mercedes Iman Diamond could win, then I would say I have to pick her because she's a brown person. But the black girls are only strong and solid and Mercedes up- Mercedes is arguably the blackest person on this whole competition. <laughs> she's from Africa. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Shout out to Mercedes. But uh, you know, like the girls are like, it's black, not brown. Ooh. Okay. Cool. 
party. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Where are you going? I don't know what's going on. Same. Um, I'm ready for the shade of the reunion. Um, the reunion is the next episode. We're Silky's gonna, see. gonna give it to y'all the shade. Damn, if y'all want some, it ain't gonna be. It ain't gonna be valid. <laughs> she can say whatever she wants. She's been saying this whole mother. Fucking season. If I had the I lip, had the lip sync, sync. <laughs> I'll lip sync. I'll, I'll, I'll be in the bottom I too. Was ready to and lip. then we watched your horrible ass, pathetic ass motherfucking lip sync. And so whatever she has to say at the reunion is invalid. What Next. did you guys think about the best friends' rights? Because that's what it is. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie unfortunately went home. Spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. We're supposed to be saying spoiler. The girl said we got to say spoiler alert. Today is Tuesday. This episode airs on Wednesday. That happened last Thursday. If I have to tell you to be spoiled, a catch week in up on yo DVR. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you work twenty four twenty four? What you doing? Even then, you would have worked four four twelves, and you would have been off work. Okay. When the, when the girls get the stage fun? is set for Brooklyn Heights to win. Thank you so much. Set the um, stage for, for the queen. Thank you. Mm, yeah, sure. The <laughs> stage was also set for Aquaria to win. The stage was also set for Valachowski to win. The stage was also set for Trixie Mattel to win. Shall I go on with blonde white queens? Can I move to the, like the last time? I nope. Um, after all these seasons, I'm finally realizing and coming to uh, a place of peace that um, the winner that RuPaul... And or the producer's pick is not really the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. Definitely. We saw that with Shangela. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like... And I believe that we are about to see it again with Evie Otley. Um, I showed you a video earlier about the Queens unanimously picking Evie Otley to, to win. Oh, you like, showed that to me? You didn't show that to me. I sure did. You showed it to some other boy. Okay. What's the video oh, called? Check your inbox, girl. Which inbox? It's a lot of inboxes on here. Um... Yeah, they you have twenty-five you, apps. And, Which one? The one that's not connected to your man. <laughs> um, what I have to deal with? So the the queens showed up to the red, car, red carpet, and the burning question was, "Girl, well, it's four girls that could win. Who do you think?" Like eight of the girls said Evie. Wow. All of them said Evie. Wow. Um, it was like one that said Silky. One that said, Silky. Um, "Bless her heart, she was just being nice." That was just her friend. Um, and then one girl that said, "Brooklyn." Everybody else said, "Evie." Oh, okay. So I think again, like I was saying, Rue and the producers can pick a winner, and that girl can get a hundred thousand dollars. And that's cute. That's nice. Um, but we, uh, we, as in me, as in probably a lot of you guys as well, have to come to grips that they don't ultimately pick the winner. The winner. Reveals themselves and right now to me the winner is Evie Otley whether RuPaul and the producers pick her or not Work the world tour is also coming to um, Wow presents um, Streaming service it looks really cute. They have picked the top 10 biggest names in drag and they are um, Is this a hit? I wish. <laughs> Shit. Did you book an ad and then tell me, girl? Yeah. Work the world. world of wonder. I mean, um, yeah, can y'all send me a check? <laughs> I'm like, is this an ad? it sounded very ad-ish. You sounded very um, yeah. on your voice. Sounded it's very practice. <laughs> uh, if you guys would like to send me a dollar to the Patreon at least, or we have a tour coming up and we are yeah. poor and broke. Um, that would be nice. But the world, the work, the world documentary is also coming out to Wild WoW Presents app, and it looks really cute because it's ten of the biggest names in drag going across thirteen different countries. It looks mm-hmm. really, really, really cute. Lastly, but least, because she is the most least important Not topic. The most least. Simon says, arrest that book. What happened in Ed Buck's apartment after two men are found dead? Here's what we know. This was March 26, 2019. And this is the most recent article about it. Yes. Two black men have been found dead in his house. And we wrote about it in two months. What is going on? So just two black men going to die? Ain't nobody going to ask no follow-ups? There's one place <coughs> that has been very... um in order about not letting the subject go huh right here at this podcast uh-huh. i would like to um 
thank Jace Barone uh, for continuing to fight directly uh, with the uh, protests and demonstrations right outside of Ed Buck's home. But unfortunately, all news other all news outlets, blogs, nobody's talking about it again. No one is bringing it up anymore. It's just a dead ass motherfucking issue, and that's what people like Ed Buck want. They stay cool, they stay quiet, they let the shit die down, and then they kill another nigga before the summer is ended. And I don't want that for my Stallion Summer. I don't want to report that Ed Buck has killed someone else over Stallion Summer. I have things to twerk to. I have things to celebrate, accomplishments. I gotta I have, figure out how to twerk left, right, left. I'm like, so how do I make the cheeks go? <laughs> I have those things to do. I don't have time to report on Ed Buck killing another black gay man when I've been fucking telling people to talk about this issue for five fucking months. So I don't have time. I don't have the range. I don't have the bandwidth. Arrest Ed Buck now. Ed Buck was arrested in 1983 for public oh, sexual indecency for grabbing the crotch of another man in the bookstore. B- Buck oh. pleaded guilty to disturbing the peace and cracked to reporters. What they didn't say was that that man enjoyed it. Dracarys. In 1983, he was arrested for acting up. And he should have been snatched up. Dracarys. No, girls. Dracarys. Um, burn them. <laughs> burn him. Burned it all. Back in Jakaris. 1983, he was out here touching people. and So now he's bringing the girls to his house. He to escalated. No Cadillac. What are y'all doing? <laughs> escalated? Escalate. Okay. <laughs> that was done on purpose. What's going on in social studies? Thank you guys so much for leaving us reviews on Apple Podcasts. Make sure that you click the purple app on your Apple device or child, if you're on SoundCloud um, or wherever you are listening to podcasts. Because there's CastBox, there's Pandora Podcast, there's Our Box. <laughs> I was say, I don't know what all the boxes are, but the boxes that play podcasts. Um, you can leave reviews there. And the late, well, one of the latest reviews, um, it says one of my favorite podcasts by B Rob 1985. This is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. It's amazing to hear people like me with similar ideas and views as I do. A great representation of queer people of color. They are funny and woke. Love the segments. I feel like I'm listening to two friends. Keep doing your thing, boys. So sh- shout out to B Rob1985. Thank you for um my pronouns. Thank you for those pronouns. I appreciate this. Um, this week in social studies, I'm gonna tell you a story, and then story time, and then I want to discuss weaponizing consent. Yes. So, um, I'm I'm sure a lot of y'all know, but don't really understand. Um, YouTuber Tati Westbrook called out her um mentee James Charles, who's 19 years old. I think she's like 36. I know, it's been like three, four weeks now. Jeffrey started jumped into it. It's very draining. So Tati Westbrook, Tati Westbrook, who's a mentor to James Charles for over the last two or three years, he's 19 years old today. Um, Tati made a video where she was calling him out about some beauty influencer stuff. Cool, um, you did a pro, you did an ad with them. I didn't like the ad, blah, blah, blah. But she also threw some gay shade in there by saying that, like, in February, I think she in Aquarius. Her birthday was, like, February 26th. Um, she was saying, Tati was saying at her birthday dinner in Seattle, they all live in um, Los Angeles. That's where the beauty influencers live. Um, James was flirting with a waiter at the restaurant where her birthday dinner was held. Well, man, if we are from Los Angeles, why are we up here in Seattle? What's going on? That was my question, but nobody seems to answer that or cared. So, cool. This is where they were vacationing, maybe. Um, Tati said that James was flirting with this waiter that was standing across the room. And it was just so offensive. And it had got on her nerves. And she had to apologize to her family about this. But what Tati did know was, um, as James Charles put out in his receipts, which is very important. Like, when the girls call you out, keep your receipt, ma'am. Um, the waiter had saw James Charles out on Instagram. So imagine me flirting with Trey down to the restaurant and Trey DM me was like, Hey, thank you for flirting with me tonight. 
um, it really turned me on. I'm bisexual. So me, a 19-year-old, imagine the things we did when we were 19. When did you suck dick first? I'm still waiting on that day. (laughs) (laughs) So... Back to the story. So James Charles is in town in Seattle from LA, and the the waiter that I'm flirting with DMs me, and I'm like, "Hey, nigga, uh, well, I'm down here to the hotel. Um, come come over and watch a movie. You know what? Come over and watch a movie mean if I'm in town. Netflix and chill. <laughs> so um, he's confessed he's bisexual. He comes over to the hotel. They make out for an hour allegedly. Wet panties. <laughs> so they do an interview. They touching and feeling and caressing and all this. And then James Charles is like, you should stay. Stay. I don't know what the the houses look like in Seattle, but I can't imagine it would be as amazing as this. I'm sure a five-star hotel James Charles is staying in because he got 15 million followers on YouTube. uh, The first gay cover girl. So I got deals, brands, things. Not using my power and success to woo you to make you gay, but like, girl, I do have these things. Um, and the guy was like, no, nah, I'm going to go home and get in my bed. So after Tati makes her video about how, oh my gosh, I can't believe James did a advertisement with this other person. And then I allege she's a creep in the gay community. The, the bisexual guy also makes a video to support Tati's video that says like, yeah... Uh, James Charles was holding me hostage in the hotel room and he forced me to kiss him and I was really not into that and I told James Charles I had a girlfriend and he was just giving damsel in distress realness but sir where was all this damsel in distress when you I was flirting with you but you found me on Instagram and messaged me while I'm still sitting at the table and then I invited you to my hotel room you confess to me that you are bisexual, and then you come to my hotel room. You make out with me for an hour. You confess in your video that you made out with me for a extended period of time, forty five minutes. He didn't really just say an hour. He was like about forty five minutes. And then now all of a sudden I kept you hostage. Look, Trey, I need some boundaries. Do we need to, as a um, more. As a person with something to lose in my encounters with trade, and you as well, at the Superman, do we need to just make all of them sign NDAs now? Or how do we protect ourselves when they feel like they can go make a video about their encounters with us and claim that we're creeps when everything was consensual? Um, trust people's energies, one. Um, the whole idea and concept of trade. Throw that shit the fuck away Because that means if he trade He ain't gonna be shit at some point Of y'all relationship Whether y'all relationship becomes a relationship Or whether y'all relationship becomes a situation Or just a friendship At some point his problems Of not being an out gay man Are going to surface in y'all relationship Whether it be Y'all sexual relationship or y'all friendship It's going to come out some way. So limit your interactions with these niggas that you are calling or perceiving trade because his insecurity is about to show up and it's it's liable to take your goddamn career out. And so um, if the cost of your career is a big ass dick, then you need to reevaluate your career. What are, your, what are your real goals? Is your goal the check or is your goal... Or- is your goal the dick? Because, I mean, if your goal is to get a big-ass dick, then sure. Risk it all out here for a big-ass dick. Because it's a big-ass dick and that's the, what you wanted in the first place. You want to get popular so you can get close to the niggas that have the big-ass dicks that you wanted. So, you won. My goal is not that. My I want to be a cover girl and get a sponsorship, a brand deal. I want to go on tour. Literally. Yes. So... Uh, I've seen and played with many of the big dicks out there Ah. And none of it is worth my careers None of them They are nice They are pretty They feel beautiful Some of them smell nice as well They are not worth your careers They smell beautiful? Oh yes I've never met the ones that took baths (laughs) You gotta step your pussy up Um, (laughs) What does success look like for me? (laughs) Stepping your pussy up To smell a big beautiful dick Wow Yeah um, that's what smell like cocoa butter. That's or, beautiful. Or baby oil. Mm. That's beautiful. What do I want one to smell like? But um, even outside of just 
um, dealing with queer and questioning men, what about like consent and like something as innocent as Joe Biden hugged me too long? And I'm not saying Joe Biden sexually assaulted me, but I feel awkward and I need to call CNBC and tell them while wow, he's running for presidency. <laughs> what are your thoughts on situations like that? Uh, same. It's the same with boundaries. I mean, there people cannot cross boundaries if you firmly set them and said, "Okay, you are too motherfucking <laughs> close. Move." I want to hug Joe Biden. I want to hug Joe Biden. I I don't want to hug Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, now there is no line that Barack Obama could cross with me <laughs> that I would tell a living soul about. Barack Obama. Huh. Could spit on me and slap me in the face with his penis, and I'm not telling not one of you. I ni- him. It was I'm not telling time. one of you niggers about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling none of y'all. He could spit on me and call me a fucking KKK member. I'm like, oh, thank you. I appreciate this. Like, so damn, babe, that was sexy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> babe, what a role play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but that is what boundaries are. I have no boundaries for Barack. Joe, <laughs> you can wave from me, wave at me from across the room. It was like those are my down. boundaries. Those are my boundaries. Create boundaries for yourself and create boundaries for other people. So um, I definitely just want to discuss um, making sure that um, as people who are always looking for um, what did the girl say? I follow Cat Black on um, YouTube, K A T, last name B L A Q U E. And she was talking about how, in her journey of becoming a trans woman, she definitely sought validation at the end of a straight man's penis. So like, do women. Woo! So do, so do biological women. No shade. Sure. Imagine seeking your own validation. It meant, it meant that you were a real woman if a straight man wanted to sleep with you, who would have to hide you and push you into a corner and, and speak to you here or kiss you here or acknowledge your presence here. Um, I really do not seek validation in those child, small spaces because a lot of these niggas' dicks is little. Shout out to Electro Abundance because Electro <laughs> Abundance saw validation as well in the same kind of categories um, where you know it was about how she was perceived as being fishy in public. Um, if you are starting to watch Post season one again like me. On Netflix It came it's out on, on May 10th yeah. um, You see like the very beginnings of Electro Abundance Where she was putting so much power Into her fishiness And her ability to quote unquote Pass as a biological woman In the daytime as well as nighttime On Park Avenue And Blanca was never going to look like this Because Blanca wasn't as passing She put that same energy And that same power into penis into the attraction that penis had to her to validate what she looked like to the rest of the community. And what was that success look like? She ended up sleeping on her couch. <laughs> yes. In addition. And and apparently she's still living with Blanca. Uh, com- yeah, she said that in the teaser. In the new teaser trailers for season two. 1990. Yes. Um, so just what do you guys think about that? Um, I cannot imagine us as more... Queer, fish, feminine, leaning men when we um, are dealing with trade. And how do we get consent? What does consent look like? Because trade would be like, well, I told him I was questioning. I told him I had a girlfriend, but I was willing to try. And consent is I can take consent back within the activity. I can take consent back. There was also that actor who had a show on Netflix who was like, she was like, well, I had took consent back, but I wasn't really vocal. It was more of a a nonverbal revoke of consent. It, well, ma'am, how am I supposed to know, ma'am? Did you revoke consent? <laughs> yeah, with the comedian. I took but you to got- dinner. You came back to my house. And I was like, well, girl, do you want to get freaky? That was um, some silk back in 1991. Um, what? What? The consent is revocable at any point. So, it's people with things to lose. Are we making sure that we're invoking cons- is it consign- signatures on consent all the time? 
And that's um, social studies this week. Outstanding opulence. Okay. Um, this week in sexual health, I figured that we would we would go back over sex party etiquette because Pride is this weekend here oh, in DC. Oh my gosh, I have seen the fly. The girls have fly- <laughs> the girls have flyers, and it just as a graphic designer, I would just like to be um, upset that the girls didn't pick me to make the flyer. But it's a cute flyer. The girls are making flyers for the sex parties. <laughs> One of the more what are you recent- doing? One of the more recent flyers was how to uh, appropriately and adequately fleet yourself before uh, the party. <laughs> they have uh, instructional guidelines. Yes, it's corporate America. They have they have indoctrinated guidelines. Indeed. Why bottoms got? I, 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 I I'm just. Re- I am only. Why saying- bottoms got to have a guideline? I am. Wow. Only- I hope there's also a guideline for. Shave this shit. You know you're here having sex with a lot of people, and hair allows diseases to hold on. So you need to shave. Fuck a bushy. Um, tw- I, it's a twat for me. But what does it call for y'all? A bushy, whatever. I'm offended. That mm. patience is a virtue. I talk loud and I'm aggressive. <laughs> Shout out to Angela. There was an instruction manual sent out by um, one of the organizers of. The sex parties in trying to tell bottoms, instruct bottoms how to properly fleet. He himself is a bottom, so this is not bottom. Uh, Don't miss my this party, is not girl. top against bottom hatred. This is a bottom telling other girls. Don't miss my party. Do not come in here and shit on the places that I've paid. I for. gotta clean up later. <laughs> so there's no bottom offense intended because Thank this you. was coming from a bottom. Thank you for clarifying. <sighs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Can't even say it. Manscape and take that extra 15 minutes in the shower. No matter what position you are intending or possibly intending on playing at the sex party. So, those... Those people that um, decide that they are going to go to the sex party and top only, but, you know, shit... If um, Night or um, Kept Secret or Oh Kept Secret Any of them girls that y'all follow on the internet Kept Secret is the one with the dreads Yes, Night has dreads too Used to Well mm, it's the difference because Night couldn't but Kept Secret can Okay it, See I see. The, the range of some of you girls uh, He used to could fuck me but now he get fucked on camera So he can't fuck me now No Girl. it's not that Ooh, another topic for another day with fucking bottoms. Anyway, uh, spend num- number one tip number one for sex party etiquette is spend that extra fifteen minutes in the shower. Whether you be manscaping, making sure your fleet is uh, immaculate, toenails. Whether you are Shape putting some extra toenails. moisturizer on yourself because people are going to be smelling you around you, you might be sweating. All of that is extremely important. Um, number three, wear and bring the things that are going to make you the sexiest, um, because those things are not going to be at the sex party more than likely. So if you need to have a jock on to fill your beat, to fill your oats, wear that jock. If you need to have your J's on with your hat cocked to the side, cocked to the back, because that makes you feel masculine and people will identify you as a top at the sex party. Cool. Wear that. If you need um, the jungle juice versus the English There's versus the XL. well, they all have an XL. Oh, okay. It, it depends know. on where your high level is um, versus the new Amsterdam. Make sure you bring the poppers of your choice. If you are an only platinum wet luxury girl, make sure you bring that because that is definitely gun not, oil. That silicone. is definitely not going to be at this expert. Gun or silicone. It's not. Y'all don't keep that at the. Gun or silicone so it can slide in easily. That should be like a no, or at least a Swiss Navy. I know a lot of these Swiss Navy like sex parties, Swiss Navy yeah. silicone, but do yes. they have silicone? Uh, I've seen Swiss Navy silicone at sex parties before, okay? Yeah, because it's the, the other kind ain't mm, no to me for my I, I'm just you saying, whatever it, it is, it. whatever it is for your vagina or for your dick that you are going to enjoy the most, different bring, strokes, different folks. Bring that shit because it is not going to be at the sex party. Number three, be polite and 
No, it was just some of those go together. Uh. <laughs> Wash your pussy and, wa- and and cut your goddamn pubic hair go together. That's the shower time. <laughs> that go together. Prep, literally. Hi. That's where I'm going. <laughs> Number three. Um, oh, I guess it's four then. Um, number three. You just said number four. Then you said number three. I said that. I said then. I'm I'm on number three. I guess that is four. Jacotis. Burn your shit up. First off, I'm, I'm wishing committee committee on this bitch right now. Um, have safe sex for whatever safe sex means to you. If safe sex means to you. There is a condom present at all times in all sexual situations, whether they be oral or intercourse, then that is safe sex for you. Have those things available. If safe sex to you means I took my prep, I am prep adherent, and I am not worried about chlamydia, gonorrhea, uh, HPV, syphilis, or any of the other STIs, I know that anything that I may get from this sexual encounter if I even get anything from the sexual encounter will not kill me. If that is safe sex for you, good. Be in compliant with whatever is safe for you. If safe sex for you is, I don't give a fuck. I'm not taking my prep. I am HIV positive and on antiretrovirals. I am saying if that is safe for you, though that is not safe for everyone around you, take responsibility in saying this is the type of sex that I am having, be advised. Enter at your own risk, literally. Number four, be polite and be patient. It is a sex party. Everyone is going to want to fuck. That does not mean that everyone is going to want to fuck you. Be it top, bottom, or versatile. It is nothing worse than being at a sex party and someone is just so thirsty to get some dick or so thirsty to fuck somebody in the ass um, that they are just trying and doing the most and just I'm gonna touch this person don't seventeen times. Don't touch me. To, oh, they don't go to the sex party if you don't want to be touched because <laughs> they don't touch go, you. I don't know. <laughs> don't go to the sex party if you don't want to be touched because you are going to be touched, yeah. attractive or not. Because some sex parties are a little more darker than other ones. And so you don't know who you're touching. But some people are more inten- intentioned in like, oh, I'm going to touch him right now. Oh, he don't want me right now. I'm going to come back in five minutes. I'm going to touch him again. Oh, I'm going to touch him again in ten minutes after. G- move. Uh-huh. Be polite. If the dick is not for you, if the ass is not for you, take that message and move on. Someone is going to want to fuck you, even if it's not in this room right now. And that is sex party etiquette again. We talked about this literally a year ago. If you want to go back and listen to our old sex party tricks and the tips. Annual, the annual. <laughs> they reminder. are there for uh, this last last year's Pride season a year ago. But that is uh, sexual health this week. Thank you guys so much. What are you here for? I was going to say because I feel like we did the songs for our souls. We already did the songs for our souls because we Well, shout out to me, hot boy Ronald. And shout out to Hot Girl Meg. Songs for our souls. Okay. <sighs> Don't forget to send us your listener questions to hereforipod at gmail.com or to any inbox where you find us on social media. The last couple of times y'all sent us listener letters, it's been on fire. So we're just going to keep moving. Um, Really quick note, I have two things. I am definitely here for Game of Thrones being over. Um, Ciao. We talked about it on Patreon and just Game of Thrones. Tune into the Patreon. The second thing is um, Superman's home state, Michigan. Republican Justin Amash did a TV interview where he professed that Trump has committed multiple impeachable offenses. Multiple and impeachable are the words that he said, in case you don't speak Southern. Um, and me as a woman... I was like, what? Did he just tell the truth? Did a Republican tell the truth on TV? Um, so, of course, Trump retaliated on Twitter. The ghetto. <laughs> Literally the ghetto. <laughs> proclaiming, <laughs> proclaiming that Mueller's report um, backed no collusion. But Trump continues to forget 
that um, Mueller's report also did not state. Mueller's report stated plainly that it did not vindicate um, Trump from any encounter where collusion was possible. It's just that Trump always made somebody else did it. <laughs> That's what Mueller's report said. Um, and Trump also will not release the unredacted report. Where well, maybe if it's girl, chat, maybe it's a, a damn adverb in here. Maybe it's a damn pronoun. Maybe it's a goddamn supporting. Um, what do you call it when this is a supportive phrase? You got a comma. You got a supporting phrase. It's not an independent phrase, so it can't be a complete thought. Maybe it's a something in here. But Trump, if you don't give us the full unredacted Mueller report, we don't know which blue line or which red line completely vindicates you from this no collusion you speak of. We can't see it. Literally, it's blacked out. We need blue lines and red lines to look at. So, Trump, until you can give us an unredacted Mueller report, I'm not here for it. And whatever you have to say against Michigan, um, Republican Rep. Justin Amash is trash. Um, so, Justin, just keep talking. Um, we hope that you build an audience and you get other Republican people in the House to say the same thing you're saying. Because that's what we need out here. More independent voices. That's what we're here for a podcast is an independent voice. So more independent voices. I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm absolutely here for it. Um, we've been waiting and trying to figure out for the longest if there was ever going to be a Republican that stood up and said what was right and um, what a lot of Republicans should already be saying. And I guess, thankfully, it's coming out of Michigan. It's coming out of Michigan. Woo! It's coming out of her. <laughs> um, but... I, I guess I'm, I'm happy and proud of that fact, um, but he is one congressman in a chorus of hundreds. Um, I would like to see a lot more Republican congressmen and definitely a slew of at least 12 Republican senators, because if we had 12 Republican senators and all the there Democrats, the votes, the votes. we could impeach the motherfucker. And that is a quote from the state of Michigan. Um what I am here for this week is um, meditation. Who? Meditation. Come on, syllables. Um, I think that oftentimes we, um, as the black gay community, are either pro-church or anti-church. And the pro-church people are, I can't live without going to church. I got to go Sunday. I got to pay my tithes to offer I know the Bible says that I'm going to hell, but we're going to forget about that part. And can then I they, party while I'm here? That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to hell, but can I party while I'm here? So the, that is the pro-church wing of the black gays, and then the anti-church wing of the black gays typically is everything antithetical to that. Uh, I don't believe in church. I don't go to church, girl. Y'all are confused. Y'all are lost. Y'all are sheep. They the confused. It was not you. <laughs> I'm the, that's what they we say. We look at each other. Yes, sure. All of that. But um, there's a common ground that um, there is something bigger than you. And you can be uh, anti-church or pro-church and know these things. And that's why I'm here for meditation this week. Meditation is a go-between in between both of them where it is a spiritual realm that does not have a religion. Anyone can study and anyone can do meditation and gain the benefits of meditation without... Um, being a part of something that seems like a cult that tells you that you are going to hell, um, that is empowering and that uh, affirms you and makes you feel better physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, this weekend, a friend of mine is doing a extremely important and powerful meditation yoga retreat over the weekend. Um, a different black affirming uh, yoga exercises for beginners to moderates to professionals that are yogis like himself and so uh if you would get over to perkins yoga on instagram you will see uh the yoga studio um and the yoga thing that he's doing this weekend that is extremely important I'm if you have it. something um if you have a gap in your schedule because i know a lot of you girls got a lot of things to do this weekend it's something to do um that is helps balance helps center if you're a pro-church gay or anti-church gay meditation is a extremely important and good way to meet in the middle of spiritualism and um 
I don't fuck with that religion shit. So those what's are two different web, sides. You said it's a website or what's the date? Perkins Yoga on Instagram. This weekend. It's, it, he has a different class every day this weekend. Oh, okay. It's because he got to <coughs> get the moderates and he got to get the, yes. the hustlers and he got to get the, yeah, the beginner yeah, girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm absolutely right. here for it. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, a black gay business that is out here for us. Um, the classes are extremely cheap and he turns no one away even if you only have a dollar. It's definitely anti-inflammatory and there's a community with high cholesterol, diabetes, jail. We need an anti-inflammatory. Mm-hmm. Meditation will definitely calm down everything you have going on. I'm here for that. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds so fun. it is time for our favorite. I was trying to introduce the last guy saying me. I'm a woman and I have a voice. Be aggressive. <laughs> it is time for our last call. <laughs> Look, as I am more like Angela White as I see myself in the mirror. <laughs> I'm like... I need to come. I need to answer. I need to meditate. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. So, <laughs> You're welcome for that. Um, it is time for our last call. If you have a Dasani, if you have a coffee, if you have a tea. Um, one of my employees at work, she was like, girl, y'all heard of this? It's a turmeric tea. I was like, turmeric is good for everything, ma'am. You're not just discovering turmeric tea at 67 years old. Thank you, though. She so. is discovering it. She's discovering for herself. She, I was gonna uh, 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 come on out. So, um, if you have a anything, what do you guys drink when you guys listen to Hair Boy Podcast? I know y'all listen to us mostly when you cook. We got to get the Hair Boy Podcast survey out. We need to, you know, so many things. Tours coming up. Make sure you guys go to hereforshop dot com and get your merch. So much. But it's time for our last call. Whatever you're drinking, have a shot with us. Have your glass up. My last call this week is to the only open bar, the only free event. I'm going to be there. In all of D.C. Pride weekend. I'm going to be there. To um, be. The board that I'm on, Impulse D.C., is putting on an event called Fifty Shades of Noir because we're celebrating the blackness of Chocolate black City? pride in Chocolate City. Um. If you are going to be here in D.C. And you would like to see either of these hosts. Slash hosts. And give us a dollar in person if you don't got one to give on Patreon. We're accepting dollars in person as well. <laughs> I'm just because you know. the, the event is free. So you ain't got to pay nothing to get in. You can come in and drink for Love free. And bar. you can come in and hang out with us for the motherfucking free. If you have a dollar. So we'll accept that. <laughs> we'll accept that. If you don't have a dollar. We're still going to take shots, and we're still going to drink with you. We appreciate all of you so Thank much. Thank you guys so much. Um, but my last call is to this event. It has been a bitch to put together. Labor of love. No. <laughs> it's uh, been the labor of love. It has been a bitch. <laughs> and uh, I want some of you guys to come out and see uh, what I have been working on, because I've been working. And um, it's going to be a great event. Uh, hundreds of the sexiest people in D.C. have committed to showing up already. Friday when you get off the plane, put on something cute. Soon get out as there. you get off the plane, come out and get your... If if this is just your opening thing, of, okay, I got all these plans, I got all this dick I'm going to get, all this ass I'm going to get when I get to D.C., come do this first because these are going to be the free drinks that's going to set you up for the rest of the night. So you going to go and do a club event later on Friday you going to go to Trey's house, and then you're going to go to the sex party. Cool. That's fine. Start off with us. Fifty Shades of Noir, uh, open bar all night, free admission, and you're going to hang out with me and this girl over here as well. <laughs> that is my last call. My last call is to the Equality Act, which passed this Friday in Congress. Um, it's the first time the house has actually approved an lgbtq civil rights bill i'm like girl 270 something years we just now getting one time where y'all pass something for us one time for the one time so um this law well the proposed bill um bans discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity and i love it um we are crossing our fingers and praying to Beyonce that the Senate will um, coincide. What is it called? Co co sponsor co 
Yeah, they, well, they have to approve. They got to co something. The, okay, the con, the House of Representatives got it, but then Senate no, well, got Well, co sponsoring is co sponsoring a bill. They don't have to co sponsor the co-sponsor Senate. Something. They have to yeah. approve the bill. The, the, yeah. the House of Representatives has already put up the okay, bill. Okay, we did our homework. Now, y'all got to grade it, and then y'all got to give us a passing grade. And y'all know it's led by Republicans right now over there, so chill. But um, for us to. For the Equality Act to be the first time ever in the history of Congress to be a LGBTQ civil rights bill, which will update the 1964 or 1965 because it was too old. Um, the 1964 civil rights bill for black people to get what they needed. I'm overjoyed. So yeah, absolutely. We talked about that as well uh, a couple weeks ago on the podcast. And we don't continue to talk about it and until it's continue. reality. Yeah, hopefully it will be. Um, child. Hopes. Huh. Uh, we'll see what the Republicans do. Um, make sure you guys use the hashtag Here for it Hive when you discuss the show on Instagram, Twitter. Um, uh, what CS Madison be saying? Facebook land, Instagram land, um, Christian Mingle. I don't know all the sites, but make sure you guys use our hashtag Here for it Hive when discussing the show on the internet. And make sure you guys go to hereforitpod.com for the um, latest on the show. Go to hereforitshop.com to get your merch. And my name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters. And of course, RonaldMatters.com. I am the Superman T H E E S U P A M A N. I am still available on MySpace. Yeah, that one too. Yeah. The revolution will be televised, even if it's on a podcast. Make sure you guys take your chuvada and wash your legs and chicken. Bye.